good afternoon or good morning, maybe. Depending on your <laughs> I really want to thank everybody for watching today. My name is Brian Shu. I have with me Natalie from uh, Military Talent Partners. And I really want to thank you, Natalie, for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know it's probably a crazy time for you, but taking time to kind of sit down and chat with me and kind of share your thoughts on being a lot being in lockdown as a thought leader. So I'm gonna turn it over to you. Kind of tell us about yourself, what you do, um, and what you're looking forward to as we go through this whole quarantine together. Thanks so much, Brian. First and foremost, thanks for giving me some of your time and inviting me to be on your podcast. I appreciate it and I'm happy to be here with you. Um, again, I am a Navy veteran and I'm the founder of Military Talent Partners. We help veterans and military spouses find meaningful careers at companies all across the country. And we also have a really unique method. We're very, uh, very profit for a purpose driven. So we have free mentorship opportunities within our organization and we partner with some of the biggest and best mentorship organizations in the world. And on top of that, we offer a six week online cohort. It's an intense coaching program with curriculum that's unique to us. It's not been done anywhere before and basically prepares transitioning service members or anyone going from one career to the next with everything TAP class doesn't teach you, with everything you didn't learn in college about how to get a job, we start with the basics of how to figure out who you are, what you want to do, and why you want to do it. Um, so we got a lot going on at Military Talent Partners. We work with candidates every day. We've got thousands of vets and spouses in our network, and we work with a lot of employers as well. That's how we um, do business and make our profit is with the companies that we provide full life cycle recruiting services for. Now you, now you did mention that you work with organizations on mentorship. Can you go into that? Because that's been a big topic for conversation, especially in the, the veteran space. But, you know, for our civilian counterparts, what, what does mentorship look like for them? And then, of course, again, the mentorship programs that you guys uh, partner with. Because, again, that's a, I feel like that's a great, great aspect for our communities, both civilian and military. Yes, I could not agree with you more. I started volunteering as a mentor almost four years ago. I felt really unsatisfied at work and I felt like I wasn't really living to my potential and I wanted to do more. So I started volunteering as a mentor and uh, I fell in love with it. I was able to give advice and insight that I couldn't really give in my day-to-day -day, um, corporate role. And I was able to really help people get to where they were going as far as elevating their potential towards a meaningful career. And uh, as time went on, I fell in love with that. I, I volunteered for just about every organization you can think of that does mentorship. And um, I wanted to create a company that um, combined the two things that I love, mentorship and recruiting. Mentorship for me became even more personal when I got my own mentors. And it was really interesting to see from the other side as a mentee, all of the amazing benefits the thought process, the mindset shift, the narrowing of advice. I think the narrowing of advice is probably the single biggest return on investment because there are so, there are so many different pieces of advice out there that it can be more confusing than helpful. You don't know who's to take, who's to toss, who to listen to. Sometimes it seems like an online competition. Um, but the way I kind of break it down is it depends on what resonates with you most individually uniquely as you um not all advice is one size fits all so if you hear something that sounds crazy it probably is but if you hear something that sounds a little scary not sure if it's for you maybe you just need to push a little further down um the, you know the boundaries that you have so i recommend finding a mentor or two or three that really resonate with who you are and where you're going in your career. Uh, industry experts, people that you feel you can trust to really listen to you, try them on for size. You don't have to select a mentor and marry them forever. Try a mentorship call for free. You can work with Veterati, which is basically mentorship on demand. You can literally take your smartphone out of your pocket and book a call with hundreds of mentors at your fingertips. You can read about them, you can check them out on LinkedIn, 
Are they in the industry that you want to go into? What have they accomplished in their career? Pick a mentor, try them on. Give yourself that time to kind of weigh it out and find the right person for you. It's kind of like dating, but with the higher stakes of your whole career in front of you. We also work with ACP. We love ACP. I've been an ACP mentor um, for several years, and we want to make sure that for people who are more long-term mentee, protege types, we want to get them involved with ACP because they will pair you with a mentor for a year for free in the professional um, arena. So you've got a long-term commitment. Not that you can't get a long-term commitment with the, with Veterati. Um, it's just different mindset. I think it's, it's kind of like mentorship on demand, whereas ACP is a long-term relationship. If you are a special operator, a fighter pilot, Navy SEAL, Green Beret, a SWIC, uh, PJ, whatever you do in special operations, you can go through an organization and apply to be a member of Elite Meet. And they also do um, incredible mentorship efforts and outreach in, in conjunction with the specific events they host across the country throughout the year. There's also Hire Heroes USA, which is an amazing organization that will pair you with mentorship um, opportunities as well as offer a slew of different career transition support. Um, and also we work with Travis Manion Foundation with our Gold Star families who may be reintegrating after struggling or suffering a loss of a loved one to reintegrate them back into the workforce through mentorship at MTP. That was a really long uh, answer. Wow, that no, those are really great answers. And those are organizations that are really crucial, especially here in the veteran community, to really grab hold of and really go spend some time getting to know them because those are really key pieces for you. And those of you that are not military related or not connected to the military community, don't just research. Um, and that's what I do conversations. Having those, having that time to research can be valuable to you um, because you can find out so much great information both on the mentorship side and just the professional development side as well. So um, one question for you. I know you, you built your organization completely remote. What is that like for you now with the whole quarantine, lockdown, COVID-19 outbreak? How has that changed your perspective as being a remote organization? Being remote means we are really everywhere all the time. I, I live in West Virginia. I'm from West Virginia, but I am constantly in D.C., so much so that people think I live there. Um, so now all of my travel has been wiped out. We're supposed to go to a veteran hiring conference next week in New York City. Um, I've already missed several events in the D.C. metro, and it looks like for the foreseeable future, through Q2, all travel is canceled. And so for an extreme extrovert such as myself, this is like my only contact with the outside world. So um, yes, I did wash my hair for this because it's a big deal, right? It's like my time to have human interaction. Uh, but in all seriousness, you know, my husband is also teleworking um, in his office downstairs. You know, once a week we do keep our daughter at home with us and that becomes a real uh, game changer because I can't do calls like this or on the phone with a five-year-old in the room because she wants to participate too. So how do you, you know, keep your business acumen, your, your, your professional mindset with all of these variables going on, right? It's crazy. But thankfully, I don't know, thankfully, luckily, however you want to phrase that, we're all going through this together. Everyone's going through the same unique struggle um, in this crazy time of this pandemic, just trying to stay healthy, um, keeping themselves and others healthy. So it's definitely difficult to navigate and to give up. You know, you don't realize how much you appreciate travel until it's taken away from you. But it also has given us the gift of time, time that we would never take if we were just stuck in our daily routines and traveling all over the U.S. and doing all the things we do every day. So it's time to kind of take on a different strategy for the rest of this quarter and building into quarter uh, Q3 as well, because who knows how long this is going to last. And you brought up some great points about that, having that time. And I think that's one thing we should all celebrate with this, is that we're now spending more time connected to those people that we, quote unquote, consider family. Now, you know, for me, family is more than just your blood, your sweat, and your tears. It's the people that you really connect with. So, you know, having that time to be able to spend together can be really crucial for you, especially if you've been in an office environment and now you're at home working with your with your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, even your kids, being able to say, hey, I know you're at home, but having that five minute, hey, how are you doing? 
how, you know, what's going on at work today, you can easily, that can easily change that outlook on the day because you're actually, you know, having that physical connection saying, I see you working. I see you struggling. Let me understand what's going on with you. And I think that's really valuable today and into the, especially in today's environment. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with the outbreak like it is, you know, you're now one of those little nuances that your partner probably has that you haven't really seen because, well, they've been doing this at the office and now they're doing it at home. <laughs> and that's a really interesting perspective that you see on this individual level. So, you know, for you being at home, what's that change for you? It's like, you know, being able to see those nuances and changes in your family dynamic. I missed what you said you were breaking up there. What's the last part? About your family dynamic. Like what, is, what has been the big difference for you seeing you know, the husband at home with the kid and then like you, you typically never see these two together. So now it's that change of, oh, this was like, like this all with the, with the kid. I think it really is a lesson in patience. Um, just last night, my husband asked me, he was like, do you remember where you, when you were five? And I said, no. And he said, well, I bet you your parents had more patience with you because you're five and you're little. And I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. So um, I don't care where you live. If you live in a one room studio or a McMansion, when you are in close proximity to your loved ones, morning, noon, and night, the smallest things can, can get to you. Um, this is not a complaint. This is an observation. Uh, but my husband does push-ups like every hour. And even though he's downstairs in his office, I can hear him like making like the push-up sounds, right? Um, and I'm just like oh, trying to record a video or I'm trying to concentrate. I'm trying to think. And all I can hear is your little sound from like two floors away. Why are you doing that? Do you do this at work? You know, so there's these little things you have to really make concessions for that sounds so dumb to the outside world, but to you, it's in your little bubble that you're now isolated in or relegated to, and you just have to make reasonable accommodations within your own family unit and your own home space to be more patient, which is something I definitely struggle with, um, but I'm actively working on. And, that, and that's also brings up another point about the work-life balance. You yeah. know, for a lot of us, we've that's been kind of drilled into us in a sense is, you know, you got to balance your work and your life. And, but now is it's now not necessarily a balance, but it's a blending of the two. So, you know, how, how are you dealing with that blending of the two environments in such a unique way, especially, you know, and if, for those that are, that are watching, how would you cope if, you know, for example, you're an office dweller and then all of a sudden you're being told go home and work. You're like, wait a minute, wait, what? You got to, you tell me I got work from home. That's not usual. So how do I do this? So fortunately, throughout my career as a corporate recruiter, there were a lot of instances um, where I would work from home, either as a part of a daily or, or weekly rhythm uh, or government shutdown, depending on what was going on. So I'm, I'm used to working from home. And then almost two years ago, two years almost, um, when I launched MTP, started working from my home office full time. I can tell you a downside to it, uh, a couple of downsides. There would be many days when I would just roll out of bed, go into my office and sit at my computer and work until all of a sudden I was so hungry or dying of thirst or my butt hurt from sitting so long. And all of a sudden it's three o'clock. So I let 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. fly by without drinking water or moving my body or having a meal. So you have to be, it sounds silly to those who've never experienced it, but you have to be, you have to make a conscious effort to care for yourself throughout the day. Um, and then my friend Jordana at um, the Recon Network made this post that was so true the other day on LinkedIn. And she said, don't watch Netflix. It is a trap. You think you're gonna like watch one episode on your lunch break before you know it, you're like halfway through a season. Uh, don't do a laundry because you can't just stop with putting something in the washer or dryer. You're going to like do the whole basket, right? You're going to do all the baskets. Like it is a trap. Um, it's great to use a timer. If you happen to have an Apple watch that reminds you every uh, 10 till the hour to stand up, use that time to actually stand up, grab some water, make some coffee, walk around, go outside, see the sun, breathe fresh air, make an effort to do these simple everyday things because they can make all the difference. And I know many of us have taken that for granted to be able to work from home. And, and now all of a sudden it's like, you're, you're right. When you're working, you're so concentrated in that workspace, 
you forget the mon- you know what we consider mundane things, but it's become so routine for us, especially those that are office dwellers. You know, you just get up, go to the bathroom, go get water, go into chat with your friend at the cubicle. You know, two aisles down, you're so used to that, but now you're being thrown into a new, a new reality. Let's call it that a new reality of working from home and working in your own space that you're never you haven't really gotten to that point of use to it because it is so new for a lot of us and you know for me I'm, I'm also 100% so I'm, I'm okay with that I've learned how to adjust my routines to that but those of us that are not have and have not been we're being thrown into a new reality and and it, it does take time to adjust and for you very well with that adjustment period so um kudos to you for that but you know for those that are losing their jobs or have lost their job what would you tell them to to get through this period um and to to maybe figure out that new path for themselves so a couple of things if you're not used to working from home and now you're isolated away from your coworkers that you enjoy uh back when i worked in a corporate business my coworkers were my daily joy and we looked forward to like an amazing lunch hour. Like every day it was a big thing. So when you have that kind of camaraderie that you're used to, and it goes down to just you, it's more important than ever before to reach out purposefully and intentionally for human connection, get on Skype, get on FaceTime, get on a zoom call, whatever it takes to have FaceTime with the people that you want to interact with. And I really recommend that everybody do a buddy check every morning, reach out face to face in whatever app works for you and do a buddy check. How are you? What's going on? Now, if you're among someone in military transition or among the 3.3 million who are unemployed due to COVID-19, this is a scary time because it seems like all of a sudden you're, you're out. You don't have anywhere where you belong. You're not writing out a comfy salary that maybe other people are able to, um, and your income is gone. There's so many things that are crushing down on you. What you have to remember is this is 100% temporary. This is not how it ends for you. There is an upswing and it will happen for you. It will happen for everyone. So now is the time to really make some goals. What do you want to take away from this time? Where do you want to work next? What do you want to do? How do you want to do it? And why? That's what I always focus on with people that I work with because we don't really ever stop to think about what we actually want to do. We're just pressured to formulate a resume and summarize our life experience and then just go get a good, a quote unquote, good job. But if we actually take the time to think about what we want, uh, who will become in that position, how we're going to do it differently or a little bit better than somebody else who does the same job and why we want that. Now we can create a new, fresh identity and personal brand. We can catapult ourselves to a meaningful career by doing this hard part first. And now you've got the time to do it. So take some time every day to work on this. Don't hunker down and put the pressure of yourself on working 10 to 12 hours in one session and figure it all out. That's not good either. Give yourself some time to breathe. Um, Job loss is traumatic. It can be very traumatic. So give yourself time to grieve that process. You're going to go through denial. You're going to go through anger. You're going to go through sadness. You're going to go through acceptance and all the stages of grief. And you're going to, you're going to feel all these things, but you're human. You're supposed to, this is awful. It's a terrible time for everyone. So you are not alone. Um, Remember that you are not alone. That's a major, major element because joblessness often translates to hopelessness and hopelessness often too often ends in trauma or suicide or things that we can't take back. So you need to know, number one, this is not forever. This is temporary. Number two, you're not alone. There is help out there. Um, You can reach out to me at MTP or one of the many organizations that have your back um, for career advice join groups on Facebook, on LinkedIn, interact with people every single day and make an effort to take care of yourself. And I think that brings up a great point is, you know, we get so focused on everything around us that now we're just thrown into that. Now you can focus on yourself. Could really become a great adventure for you, especially if you are dealing with job loss. This is your time to, to reinvent yourself and recreate that professional image for yourself and recreate that professional brand. And you brought up another point about branding. And here's, here's an interesting concept about is you're now, instead of having a separate personal 
and professional brand, you now have a blended brand of your professional and personal values together. I'm sorry, you were breaking up again. I couldn't oh, hear. So the the, the it's obviously terrible today. <laughs> The, what I'm thinking, you know, one thing I've thought about recently since everything's happened, a bloody brand has to connect all this stuff together. And they're, they're, they're one the same. Instead of, instead of having a separate personal brand and a professional brand, you're now blending those two into one brand to really tell your story uh, from, from both aspects. And I want to hear your, kind of your thoughts on that, of blending the two together, just like your work-life balance is no longer one like balance but a work life blend yeah i think really if we if we tell our story in the right way then our brand is holistic it encompasses everything that we are personally and professionally uh maybe not so much personally more professional maybe like 80 20 right um you want to focus on the important piece of what you want to do with your career someone that you're pitching to or interviewing with or networking with really doesn't need to know so much about your personal life but they do need to know specifically what you want to do how you're going to do it and why so that they can remember that about you so that when they have access to a job or they're talking about you to somebody else they can accurately represent who you are, what you do, and why you do it. So they may be able to plug you into a job or internally refer you or make a connection that's going to help you get closer to what it is you are looking for. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. Being articulate will make you confident and competent. When you're talking about yourself, if you're not confident and competent, that's a red flag, right? So you need to be so familiar with what you're saying that it's authentic and second nature. Otherwise, you're going to come across, you know, disingenuine or um, too rehearsed and stiff, and that makes people uncomfortable. You only have five to six seconds to grab their attention anyway. So give them a punchline about you first. What do you absolutely want them to know? It's not, hi, I'm Natalie. I was in the military. Now I have a company. I was a recruiter for 10 years. Like they don't want to hear that, that rehearsed speech. They want to hear, hey, I'm Natalie and I help vets and spouses find meaningful careers. A meaningful career can change your life. And I believe in elevating human potential to get them where they want to be. Okay, well, maybe they're going to listen to me now. They don't really care where I've worked or how many years of experience I have as a recruiter. Do you see the difference? Yeah, absolutely. And that brings up a great point of authenticity because it, it, you know, especially now with today, in today's environment, being authentic can be a game changer for you, especially if you're in the job search or you've lost your job, you know, being able to tell that authentic story about yourself, both on a personal and professional level can be valuable because that gets, what you're saying, it gets, attention. It gets engaged in you. It gets them to pay attention. And that's what we need in today's environment is to be able to stand out and be able to tell that story um, in the most accurate way possible, in the most authentic way possible, too. So, um, you know, it, as leaders in the military, especially, we're used to chaotic environments and our civilian counterparts may not be. So if I was a, a civilian leader and maybe never spent a day in the military, what would you tell me to be more effective leading my teams through this type of situation? Active listening, I think, is one of the most important traits of a good leader. Um, I can't tell you how many people, and it's so painfully noticeable when someone like interjects and talks over you or anticipates your response and just cuts you off or um, just flat out is not listening. It just takes all of the respect and the momentum out of that environment. So it's tough. But unfortunately, not all leaders have the same um, leadership acumen or, or training. So I think if you take on the mindset of less leadership, more service, how can you serve your team? How can you serve your customers, your company? How can you provide service instead of leadership? you will lead from the right place because you're getting to the importance of what you want to accomplish, not so much doing what you were taught or told or what sounds good because you're a big fancy leader. Uh, however you want to say it, becoming more of a player's coach will allow you to be, um, allow you to level up with, with everyone that you work for and with. Uh, and who people who report to you and you'll get so much more authentic respect and 
um, effective attention when you, when you approach it in that way. And you brought up a great point about the veteran space being, you know, able to handle those situations. And if I was a civilian employer um, listening to this and watching this, this series, what would you want to tell me about the veteran community? Not I'm talking about just people that wear the uniform, those of us that put the uniform on, myself included, but their spouses or their dependent children. What would you tell that employer about those people and about those professionals that are trying to connect with the organizations and build those relationships? I would tell organizations who are interested in learning more about vets and spouses and their benefit to organizations that they do everything. There is no one job, career path, or demographic that is tailored for and with veterans or spouses. They literally do everything. Um, do you, can you imagine for a second what the biggest veteran job title at LinkedIn is? Project manager. Software Everybody, engineer. Or, or really? Hmm. Software engineer. You, you cannot put a label on employment for vets and spouses. Also, military spouses are also men. They're not all women. They're not all homemakers. They're not that there's anything wrong with being a homemaker, but these women are professional. They have degrees and they need to be evaluated like anybody else and not seen as a flight risk because they're, they're supporting their spouse who serves in the military. There are military spouses who've been stationed in the same location for more than a decade. So having an open mind and understanding that veterans and spouses should be equally evaluated with their, their civilian counterparts and that they can do everything. And on top of that, they bring a set of unique, talented skills that other people don't. You cannot teach resilience. You have to experience so much in your life that you cultivate that internally. You cannot teach grit. You have to be so used to doing things you don't want to do, but you do them anyway, that you cultivate it from within. Those are just two small examples out of a million different things that we could talk <laughs> about that vets and spouses can master over their civilian counterparts. So I would urge all companies, all employers, if you're hiring, look at America's best and brightest talent. Look at the veterans and military spouses who are interested in working for you. Have a conversation with them and learn more about them before you think you know what they can do. And that brings up a great point about the resiliency factor. And I think that's a one that kind of gets overlooked. And it's not because there's just so many other things, but just resiliency kind of hasn't really been brought to the forefront. So I, I want to hear some more about that piece because I think that can be a great conversation starter especially if you're a leader in corporate America that is looking to hire the veteran community or their spouses. Think about your military career and how many times you were told, especially coming up, work harder, work, work smarter, not harder. Do you know how many failed attempts it takes before you actually figure out what smarter is? That is resilience. That is formulated, calculated, experienced, experimental resilience. You have been knocked down. So many things have not worked. And we've been in war, we've been at war for almost 20 years. So there have been a pl there have been plenty of situations that have been uh, organically put in front of us where the only option was to become resilient. Otherwise we wouldn't be here having this conversation. So I, I really think that that's an overlooked skill it's a misunderstood quality and it's definitely undervalued. I absolutely 100% agree with that. And, you know, through my conversations, it has been brought up multiple times about the resiliency part. And I encourage you guys, if you're watching this to, you know, consider that resiliency piece of your hiring strategies, um, especially if you're working into veteran or spouse space, the resiliency factor that they bring to your organization can be paramount to your success. So, and I know with you, Pat, Natalie, your, your organization has done a wonderful job expressing that value to corporate America. And, you know, I can encourage, I encourage everyone that reaches, that watches this, reach out to Natalie, have that conversation. Um, you know, Natalie, if they want to start a conversation, how would they get in contact with you? 
you can reach out to us at militarytalentpartners.com. I personally answer that inbox. So you can reach out to me there anytime. You can find me on LinkedIn or just email me directly, natalie at militarytalentpartners.com. Yep, there we go. I can't obviously unmute myself. Goodness, you think I know how to work this thing. Um, but technology obviously wants to challenge me today. But you know what? That's also part of who I am. You know, we're technology. We're, we're learning how technology can impact our lives. You know, for you know, if you did this ten years ago, you and I probably wouldn't be having this conversation because there would be no Zoom and LinkedIn. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Though, let's be honest. Um, but the technology there is useful, and it can be beneficial to you as a whether you're seeking a job or you're in the middle of your career, you know, you learn that technology can be hugely impactful, not only for you, but also for your organization. So, you know, I encourage you to use the technology. What's in front of you is amazing. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we should embrace this moment of change. And that's, I think, another thing that the veteran community can bring is we embrace change very well. We, we live for change. We, we thrive in change. And for us, like me personally, when I'm looking at lockdown and quarantine, I'm like, oh, all right, cool. I can't leave my house. No big deal. Doesn't hurt my feelings. I mean, it kind of sucks because I can't pick up a few things here and there that I need. But at the end of the day, I can focus on what's important to me. And again, for those of you that are civilians that maybe never dealt in a harsh environment, it's not the end of the world. The light at the end of the tunnel will get brighter. We're all in this together, though. So. Um, you know, I want to wrap this up real quick. What would be one inspiring thought that you would have to share with the community? I think the most inspiring thought that I can share that will translate to anyone, anywhere, no matter what situation you're in, if you're thriving in business, if you are suffering in a small business like ours, if you are unemployed, underemployed, or have your dream job, no matter who you are, you didn't come this far to only come this far. We will get through this together. We will be better for it. And so much in our life and in this world is ahead of us. All we have to do is reach out and get it. Well, well said. And I mean, thank you so much again for your time, Natalie. I, I know I've enjoyed our conversations throughout the years. And uh, I look forward to future conversations and maybe in the much better times too. So. And again, you're absolutely right. The darkest days are, are still to come, but we can get through that. So, um, you know, Natalie, you've been a pleasure to talk today. I know you like, thank you. I get to talk to a human. <laughs> I don't get to just talk to a wall. <laughs> um, but, you know, I hope our audience reaches out to you and, and actually starts that conversation. And I hope you provide some great insights to them. And your insights have been valuable today. And you know, if you ever want to come back on, by all means, let's let's do this again. So, um, awesome. I appreciate I appreciate so your much. time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate yours. Day. Thank you. Stay Have well. Great, you too. Take care of yourself, Natalie. Okay. Bye. Bye. -bye.